Hey guys, welcome back to the Fusion 480 build series. In this video, we'll be covering the tail and attaching it to the back of the mainframe. Make sure you have all the parts that are laid out before you, as you can see, and let's go ahead and get started. Before we get started, I am gonna recommend spraying the tail belt with some chain wax or anything of that nature. This is to keep it kind of lubricated so that it doesn't dry out and snap over time. So it's very good to just go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, so first go ahead and locate the tail boom and then these two tail boom support blocks. These are gonna be used to mount the tail boom to the frame. It's essentially really easy. As they slide in, there's a screw on the top and there's two assigned holes as you can see for each block. So let's go ahead and get this step out of the way. Keep in mind that each block is the same. There is no front or back. The only difference is that there is a curve on one side of each block and then there's a flat side. I'm gonna have the curved side assigned towards the frame, but it doesn't matter. There is no right way or wrong way. Just go ahead and mount these up. Okay, now we can go ahead and lock these two bolts in place. This is to secure these blocks. Okay, so now that these blocks are secure, we can go ahead and mount the tail boom up to the mainframe. This is very easy as it's just eight screws in total. And then all we have to do is just feed the tail belt through the tube. If you have trouble feeding the belt through the tube is sometimes it gets stuck. What I like to do is I like to tie a piece of string around the belt and then just feed the string through the tube as it's a lot easier. And then I can just pull the string out through the other side and it'll pull the, the belt with it. Okay, so now that the tail boom is mounted up to the mainframe, we can go ahead and install the flywireless unit mount. You can see that there is a top and a bottom. The way to tell is the indents on the top of the plate. As you can see, it fits up with the screw like so. And it's four screws in total as you can see. So let's go ahead and get this out of the way. Okay, so now we can go ahead and start installing components to the back of the tail boom. First, we'll put on this guide, just make sure that's out of the way. Next, we'll be looking at these two blocks. Take note on the tail boom that there is four holes in total, one right here, one right here, and then two on the back side. These are for the screws on each block, as you can see. Make sure the bracket itself, the screw up here, is on top. That's how these will be mounted, so let's go ahead and do that. Okay, so now that these are mounted, we can go ahead and take these screws up here and then clamp them down so that these blocks are secure.
Taking a look at the bell crank, these two screws right here are going to be used to install the actual crank to the tailplate. This screw right here is going to be used to hold the crank itself onto the mount. And then this ball link right here is going to be used to attach to the tail control rod. Make sure that these two are loctited in this step and then these will be loctited later to install the mount to the actual plate. Note that whenever you take out the screw from the crank, there's gonna be a spacer on either side of the bearings. And if you take a look at the spacer, there is one side where it's gonna be protruding out a little bit. Make sure that side is up against the bearing like so. So in this video we'll be installing the tail fin, the other tail plate, the tail belt guide pulley, and then this rear support to the actual blocks on the tail boom. So this is very easy. As you can see there's cutouts for these screws. They are oval shaped so then you can adjust your tail belt tension once you get the pulley set up and everything is ready to go. But for now we'll just be installing it with that Loctite on these screws and getting everything ready to set up. Okay, now we'll be installing the bell crank to this plate. Make sure that you do this first before you attach the two plates to the block on the tail as you can't get to these two screws back here and they'll just be going on like so. Keep in mind that you want to keep these eight screws loosened so then you can pull the full assembly back. This is so you can tighten the belt tension whenever your pulley and your tail shaft is in. Now we can install the tail pulley and the tail rotor. The first thing that you want to do is you want to make sure that your belt is straight down the tube and it's not twisted or anything like that. And then how it's going to assemble, you're going to want the belt to turn this way. So then whenever it pulls back, the main rotor spins because the rotor is going to be flipping backwards like that. Now let's take the tail pulley. We'll loosen these set screws just to make sure that the tail shaft can slide through easily. Now we can go ahead, slip it up under here. Like I said, make sure the belt has no twists or anything like that. Install it like so. Spin it around and line it up in the bearing. Might be a little tricky but just make sure it's all lined up and you're good to go. Keep in mind that whenever you slide in the tail shaft, you're gonna want to make sure that this ball link is connected to the bell crank. You can also pull the shaft out the other side to make sure that the flat spots are aligned with the set screws. Then you can go ahead, push it back in, make sure the screws are Loctited, and then we can go ahead and tighten these set screws down on either side. Keep in note that there are two. Another thing to do is to put some trifle on this shaft. This is all just helping the tail servo, making sure it doesn't work as hard as it has to. Okay, now let's check the tail belt tension. What I like to do is I like to take a screwdriver or anything like that, come up here by the main gear and actually push the tail belt a little bit. As you can see, it's moving just a slight bit. It's actually very close to where I want it to be, but what I'm gonna be doing is I'm gonna be going to the back assembly and I'm gonna be pushing those eight screws, four on either side, and I'm gonna be pulling back and I'm gonna be tightening them while I'm pulling back and that's going to tighten up the tail belt tension a little bit.
Now that the tail belt tension is set, congratulations, you've completed the build for the Fusion 480. Be sure to check out the next video where we'll be installing the servos, the ESC, and the flybarless unit and wiring up everything. Thank you for watching and don't forget to leave a like and subscribe.